everybody, and welcome to Technical Talks. I'm your host, Bill Murphy, with ASP Quick Supply, Bowman Construction, and Cascade Geosynthetics. And we'll do a little bit of a company intro here, uh, and then we'll do the normal introduction for our guest speaker. So with our company introduction, I'm clicking on this, and it's going to let me control it. I just know it will. There it is. Hale Holdings Company is the owner of our quick supply company, ASP Enterprises, Bowman Construction Supply, and Cascade Geosynthetics, of which Madeline and I work for um, all four of those. We are construction supply solutions provider, and we're across a large map of the United States. You'll see that here in a moment with a lot of decades of experience across the companies, and we're blessed with very, very qualified technical salespeople who have been in the industry for a long time. They're a valuable resource to you. So please reach out to them. As you can see on the map, wherever you're located, this would be who you contact between ASP, Quick, Bowman, and Cascade. But you always have me available, Madeline available. And then you're also encouraged to reach out to our manufacturers. In this case, it'll be Tyler. But we also work in some of the areas that weren't highlighted on that map. We have friends that do what we do, and we can share resources and information. So no matter where you're at, no matter where your project is, if you have questions, reach out. We love to help you. We don't have time to cover everything we get into, but if you don't know much about us, check out our website or follow us on LinkedIn or both, and you'll see that we have a lot of different solutions for a lot of different situations, and we're blessed to have a wonderful reputation in our industries. We're also blessed that over the last few years, we found out we are very good at logistics. We're very good at bringing in a lot of material, but strategically and surgically delivering that material to the job site. One of the things that will help you is specifications. If you specify a solution that you learn about through us, it's really helpful if you specify us as the distributor, not just so we get involved with the sale, but more importantly, so that we can help you. And I I think I'm going to jump over and hand controls over. Tyler, if you have your PowerPoint ready to go, folks, right now I'm going to hand over controls. And you just heard the charming voice of my good friend, Tyler Searle from Muscle Wall. I do have a little bio for Ty Tyler, but I don't have it pulled up. I will just tell you that i um, personal friends with him and his family, and I'm really grateful for him to join us. This is our last Technical Talks webinar of 2023, and we couldn't end with a better person. So Tyler, with that, I'm going to mute myself, and I hope that you'll take over and chime in. We'll chime in as we see fit. Perfect. Bill, thank I really Tyler. appreciate it. Thanks again, Madeline. Yeah, thank you, Bill and Madeline. And thank you, everyone, for jumping on. I really appreciate everyone making the time. Um, I'm, I'm beyond grateful for the opportunity to, to meet with everyone today and to jump into this. Um, I've, I've had the opportunity to uh, join the, the Bowman, Cascade, ASP, Quick Supply family of companies on, on a variety of different, um, you know, clean and green weeks and, and different presentation opportunities. And so hopefully some of this information is, is you know, a little bit of a repeat for, for some folks. Um, but at the same time, I've got a great deal of new content in this presentation. So even if you have seen uh, some of the information on Muscle Wall. I've got a bunch of new projects that I can highlight and, and hopefully we can jump into some new topics for you today. So what I like to do um, is, is I like to just jump into the presentation, kind of go over the engineering and the logistics first, and then transition from there into the different applications for the system. Um, and, and so what we'll do is we'll start with flood. And then from there, I'll move into the construction space, kind of focusing more so on heavy civil, uh, stream work, river work, and then some erosion control. And then at the end, we'll touch base on the containment side. Um, definitely throw in all questions and, and I'll help Bill and, and the ASP quick supply team answer them after the call. So this is uh, just, just getting rolling here. This is the engineering behind the muscle wall system. With our walls, they're all designed with a toe. That's this bottom L shape of the wall that's proportional to the height of that wall unit so that that wall unit is designed to retain to that full height. Um, pretty simple design. Each of the walls just has that L-shaped design. As that risk force pushes against the system, it pushes pressure onto the toe of the wall. And each wall is over-engineered to retain, again, to its full height and even over top without failing. The walls themselves, they're LDPE, low-density polyethylene plastic. Um, with that being said, that it's, a, it's a really durable material. Uh, the actual wall is about a quarter inch thick in material. And then we also have heavy UV inhibitors that are injected into the molding process. Um, all that said and done to say that it's, it's a durable system that's designed to last decades of use and reuse. And that's one of the key assets of the muscle wall system is, is that malu sorry that mobility and reusability. Really quickly before I jump into the next slide, and, and as I get into the applications, a, a lot of these finer details will, will come to light. But I do just want to point out that the water, or sorry, the, the barriers are water filled. And so to do that, we have a port cap on the top 
of the wall and then a bump plug on the bottom corner of the wall. And so that's how we fill the walls and then empty the walls when we're ready to mobilize them. At this point, our company has been around for over 15 years. Um, in the last 15 years, we've had quite a bit of experience, both uh, on, on the side of being tested, uh, but also real life applications. Um, certainly some highlight uh, groups that we've worked with is the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Um, I've worked with them closely throughout the Midwest and then, of course, on the coastlines and then a slew of other groups here as well. Um, just this year, uh, a recent approval, I just finalized our approval with the Colorado DOT. Uh, really quickly, why, why I share this is, is, you know, we are more than happy and, and would love to work with you guys. If, if there's stakeholders or entities that um, would want to have approval of, of the muscle system before seeing it on site, you know, definitely just involve us or, or Bill in the conversation. We're happy to, you know, help you make those steps and, and support you in that. And then just the mobility of the system. This is probably, the, in my mind, one of the key assets of the muscle wall system is the ability to move it quickly from location to location. And then once it's on location, being able to quickly deploy it with just a small team of people and without necessarily having to have heavy machinery on hand. Uh, if you do have heavy machinery, ideally a forklift, that helps for staging the pallets of walls you know, along the, the project site. Uh, but without that, the walls are certainly mobile without heavy machinery. And then just Quick comparisons, uh, usually we're, we're competing against concrete or earthen materials, um, berms, jersey barriers, K-rails, things like that. Uh, so just for comparison, we can get over 1,500 linear feet of two-foot barrier onto just one semi-truck. For, for concrete or earthen material, you're at between 40 and 50 semi-loads of, of material. So uh, just, again, highlighting the idea of, of actually having ease of mobility, being able to move the walls from project to project and being cost-effective in doing that. And then again, kind of just parlaying off of mobility, but mobility on site, being able to move the walls into tight locations and um, working on different terrain, working in water on dry terrain, um, being able to walk downstairs, things like that. And then also just uh, the, the agility of the system. So in between each juncture where the walls slide together and connect, they have a horizontal degree of rotation, 22 degrees of rotation. And then they can also vertically shift at each of those juncture points. So here in this bottom left picture, you're seeing the system transitioning over a curve. Um, I'm, I'm happy to get into details, but in short, we, we have a lot more agility than you might think looking at the system on paper. And then I'm, I'm just kind of nailing this idea and, and bringing it on home. Um, but one of the other ideas is that all of our walls can uh, interlock and connect to each other and work with each other. Um, and that's super significant when we're getting creative. Oftentimes on the stormwater and the erosion side, folks will use our system as a, as a temporary velocity check weir, where they'll have a low point in the middle area for a spillover area. Um, and, and so it allows for some creativity in, in those aspects, but then it also allows the customer to be cost efficient and, and be able to use taller walls where needed um, for lower elevation points and then vice versa. You know, at higher elevation points, using shorter walls, being cost efficient, and and just having that ease of mobility. Taking a step back, uh, what we do is we manufacture a mobile and reusable wall. We have a variation of of different heights, starting with our six inch muscle wall, and then going up to our tall walls. We have walls that are two foot high, three foot, four foot, and then six foot and eight feet in height. All of these walls are designed just for retention. I mean, that's the idea. But uh, with that being said, it's it's a lot of fun, and, and I have a lot of fun seeing what we can do with the system. And again, today we'll focus primarily on the flood control space initially, and then from there we'll move into the construction space. Um, but if if some of these other spaces apply to you and we didn't touch on them, you know, again, just follow up with us, and I'm, I'd be happy to get you some more information, um, namely like post fire and, and coastal erosion. Yes, sir. Hey, Tyler, stay on, stay on this slide for a minute. Sorry to interrupt. One of my favorite things about you with this product is we get more pictures and videos from you than we do any other manufacturer or any other uh, friend in the industry. And your enthusiasm comes through even with your text messages and your phone calls, um, especially when you guys solve a problem for somebody and they're just overjoyed that you're there. So uh, keep it up. Keep up the good work. I really love your enthusiasm. Thanks. You're doing great. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. I do. I, I love what I do. I love doing this. Um, for a little bit of background on me, my background is in civil engineering. I studied uh, civil engineering, graduated with a BS degree, 
And then I was focusing in hydraulics. Um, and, and so I was working at the Utah State Water Lab and Mosul actually had their system tested by USU. Uh, long story short, it's been a wild ride uh, moving into the space. And it's such a niche, interesting space working in between contractors, municipalities, distributors. Uh, but like Bill said, I love what I do. Um, so genuinely, I, I'd, I'd be stoked to be in any of uh, the conversations. Moving forward here. On the flood side, we've had a great deal of testing at this point and, and um, real life applications. But just to highlight a couple, uh, we have been tested and approved by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, FM Global and ASF PM. I know uh, essentially this is just a mouthful of, of acronyms and a long list of acronyms, um, but these are key stakeholders across the United States and globally in the flood control space. And we've worked hand in hand with them and then also working on the private side as well. Um, I'm going to actually show a short clip of that U.S. Army Corps testing, but I do want to note we do have a full report from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, so you can go in and actually see how they tested our system um, and kind of get that third-party perspective. And then they also have tested any other system that's tested and approved by the Army Corps of Engineers. You can compare our reports apples to apples to see you know, how different solutions do through different testing events. This is why I love what I do. I mean, this gets me so excited. This is a project that I had over here in Colorado. It's a post-fire project. So we had a great deal of fire uh, fires here in Colorado over the last few years. And with that, we've had uh, burn scars and, and loss of vegetation. And in certain areas, they have flash floods regularly now. And so this is one of those projects where the NRCS and the USGS uh, got, in, uh, got in here and they actually funded the muscle system uh, to pre protect this property. And then the actual homeowner reached out to me on Facebook and she said, Tyler, um, you know, we we had this massive storm event, but your walls saved our property. And she was just you know, super grateful. But this is, you know, what makes my job all worthwhile. These moments right here. Um, on the flood side, typically we're being used in, in kind of two different ways. The first way is, is being used as a freeboard solution. So using our system on levees, existing levees, uh, channels, river embankments, roadways, any of the above where you're at risk of, of that flow overtopping the embankment and then causing damage. With our system, you can use it as an instant freeboard solution. Uh, that's that's coined from the California DWR. They call the Muswell system Muswell Instant Freeboard. And they use it as instant freeboard on their levees. So in, in just a day or two days time, they can deploy thousands of linear feet and have the agility to use it where they need, depending on you know where the storms are hitting. On the flip side, the second area that I feel like our system is used on heavily in the flood space is certainly perimeter control. So using our system around key utility areas, downtown areas, historic buildings, um, you know, private residences, uh, all of the above. But using our system for perimeter control to just protect that area and keep it dry. And then just a couple notes, I, I've skipped over uh, one of the key details here. So the muscle wall system itself is just the structural component. Uh, we we use this system with adjacent technologies, namely usually liners, to complete the entire system. And so the walls themselves, when you're deploying the walls, you drop the walls, you fill them with water, and then you use these safety straps between each unit. And then you'll wrap the walls with liner, and then we have liner clips to help cinch that liner tight on the system. So moving forward into the flood side, you know, all of these projects are are where we're wrapping our system with an impermeable liner so that we can control that flow. Just one more quick project shot. Um, this is from that same property where, where she messaged me on Facebook, but just an unbelievable shot. And if you could hear the audio behind this video, I mean, it, it really speaks to the energy behind this flow. Um, but in short, our system does exceptionally well in high risk areas and areas where other solutions might be prone to eroding or rolling with the momentum. Our system does well at standing strong. And then I have to share just a short snip from this U.S. Army Corps testing. This is that mouthful of acronyms, but it's a three-pronged test with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, FM Global, and then the Association of State Floodplain Managers. Um, in total, it took us almost four years to get through this testing process. But at this point, we have completed all of their testing and we are formally approved. Um, not only that, but to date, we are the tallest solution to ever pass all of their flood testing uh, for perimeter control. So our four foot system is currently the tallest solution. And namely with our system, you do not need any freeboard. Right here, you're seeing the overtopping test. Uh, that's a huge asset with our system is that you can control that flow or retain to the very height of our system. And even if it overtops, you're not at risk of failing. 
And then here's a current test. Then you're going to see a debris impact test here right, right now. So they pulled a 3,000 pound pole and a 5,000 pound pole at our system. But in short, because it has that LDPE quality, it has a lot of malleability and flex. It's not a rigid material. It's able to take that force and, and dissipate that energy. Alrighty, I'm going to move forward. We're going to move into this uh, kind of more so into the construction space, um, focusing with stormwater and erosion first. Um, when we move into this space, we're, we're switching up the adjacent technologies that we're wrapping around the muscle wall system. So oftentimes when we're working in stormwater and erosion, now we're wrapping with, sorry, we're wrapping our system with a geo felt or some permeable type of liner that allows that water to trickle and filter through the liner and through the muscle wall system. But then we're able to retain and capture that sediment trying to leave the site. And so liners on the stormwater side, definitely site specific. You know, talk to uh, Bill Murphy or, or one of the ASP quick supply folks or, or one of the family companies and, and get their input because they are absolute experts on liner. And every one of these projects I should mention, there hasn't been a picture I've shown that I didn't work directly with the Bowman Cascade ASP quick supply group. So every slide that you'll see, these are projects that we work directly with their team on. Um, so they're very familiar with, with the different liners and components. So on the, on the construction side, typically what we're doing is, is we're using our system in those niche headache areas where it's just a problem area, where, where you're having expenses going out the window left and right, you know, on the maintenance side for materials, for time, you know, what have you. That's where it makes a lot of sense to put a few muscle walls in just to completely eliminate that risk. You know, we're not in the same cost category of a silt fence, but we're, we're not even in the same category as a solution either. Uh, you know, with our system, system, it's a set it and forget it, and you can leave it in place for years on end. And that's just one more note on this slide right here. I helped this uh, group. This is Classic Homes Land Development. We deployed this earlier this year in like January or February, and now it's been in place and it's still in place right now. And it's a four-year project, so they're just going to leave it in place throughout the whole duration while they have open ground. And this is the lowest point on their property, kind of the highest risk area. Just a few more shots showing our system working really effectively to filter that water. Um, this shot on the left side, that short video, that's actually some testing that we did with the stormwater facility for Colorado. They invited us out for a demo day and, and we got some walls in and, and they were testing failures, just opening up entire water trucks onto these solutions and observing to see how they would fail. Of course, I'm cocky and arrogant and said, let's get in there and, and see what we can do. And so they let me throw in a wall and, and, you know, to everyone's surprise and not to mine, but we did super well. We were able to capture that energy, create that ponding effect, slow down that velocity, let that sediment and the particulates settle out. And then they have that uniform seepage coming through the bottom side of our wall. Um, I'm, I'm more than happy to get into the details of liner and wrapping it around the system, but typically um, nine times out of 10, muscle wall, and then they're trenching the liner just in front of the toe of the muscle wall system to make sure that we have a complete seal and that that uh, water or storm water is not going to road out underneath our system. Hey, Tyler, that uh, video on the left reminds me of when you first um, met muscle wall and they were testing at Utah State where you did have water blasting into it to see how it would respond and you're creating that ponding effect. And it, what impressed me, I think you and Ryan did one for CDOT on I-25. And in the pictures of that project, there were failed uh, silt, rows of silt fence and straw bales and fence posts and everything beyond it, where they had just gotten creative and tried to stack things up, almost like you're putting appliances and furniture against the door to keep a bad guy out of your house. But they had just looked like they had tried everything except old cars and appliances on that ditch check. And where you put in the muscle wall and you did have that little lower section to create a weir. Uh, you took all that impact and just solved that problem for them. So I don't think there's any reason to compare the cost to anything else that doesn't work. It's a solution that works. So it's in a category of its own. But would you say that's similar? That video on the left is similar to when you first were impressed with muscle wall yourself? Absolutely. And and Bill, I appreciate it. And, and I love I love how, how knowledgeable you are on our system. So it, towards the end of this presentation, I have that video snip. So so I'll share it with everyone okay. that's on the call. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Definitely an awesome application and, and you're dead on. So I appreciate the input. Thank you. Moving forward, I, I, I also just want to highlight the agility of the system again on the stormwater side. You know, looking at the system as a wall on paper, it's hard to picture how the system would work into a slope and work up and around terrain and what have you. 
Um, so I love this project right here. This is a high profile project over on the West Coast right there in the Bay. And, you know, with that super high risk climate, they just needed to have complete control. And this was a really high risk situation where they had 15 to 50 percent grades. Jason, I mean, they were essentially working with almost a cliff edge uh, on some of these areas. But of course, being California, they want to build, you know, massive mansions on this hillside. And so they needed to get in there and they needed to have control through the construction process. Um, but again, I, I think it, sorry, I think these images do well at illustrating how well the system can work with that terrain. Now, uh, again, we have that 22 degrees of rotation horizontally, and then the walls can vertically shift. And then in addition to that, they just have a little bit of wiggle room, I like to say. Um, and, and so they can work, work into the area pretty well. And then just lastly, we also have 45 degree and 90 degree corners with also 22 degrees on each side. So we can really get any angle you're looking for. I'm going to transition now, and I apologize. My my voice is hoarse. My family came down with the RSV virus, um, and it's just been a doozy for us. Um, but we're getting through it. And so, anyways, I apologize. My voice is kind of going out. But this is this is this next section is is one of my favorite sections to jump into. Um, essentially, we're now using our system, the Muswell system, to divert and control flows. Uh, when when companies are getting in there and doing bridge work or construction work or, or any work that they're having to get into streams and, and river or lake bodies, they're able to use our system to dewater and control that flow. And so I'll just share just a short video to get us kicked off here. I'll go ahead and I'll mute it. Is this video playing okay, Bill? Is the quality okay? Yeah, yeah, it's coming through. A little little choppy, but it's because it's such a massive file, but it's awesome. It's go, It's going well. Okay. Okay. So all of these different stream diversions, um, all of them except for one were done right here in Colorado, but we did actually just knock out a stream diversion uh, cofferdam project with the ASP crew um, right there over in Illinois. Um, and so Castle Construction now has experience and has the muscle system right there in the Midwest. And I think you should see a short snip of their project throughout this video. But I love this video. It's just 90 seconds long, but it really quickly, there we go. There was ASP. Sorry, I missed it. <laughs> so there's Adam Litkin right there and the castle <laughs> crew. What a sad. Um, yeah, absolutely. So that's just a side note, but anytime I'm doing any of these projects, because oftentimes it's something that, you know, no one's done before, um, oftentimes in the state as a whole. So I'm more than happy to get out there and short. And, and if not me, uh, oftentimes me and a Bowman or, or ASP Quick Supply Cascade team member, or maybe several of us were, will be on site. Um, but all of these projects, you know, Ryan, Mick, um, Adam, there's a lot of really, really good sales guys uh, within that family of company. And, and again, they supported us on these projects. All right, moving forward. So now uh, I'm just kind of going to kind of walk through what the idea here. So with the muscle wall system, yes, and I'm keeping an eye on the Q&A um, just in the background. We are going to have, I'm going to show you guys a shot. And that's what Bill um, kind of clued into is, is we do have some testing where we actually just hit our system uh, with a parallel flow or sorry, a perpendicular flow where it's just coming right at our system. So I'll show you how well it does with that as well. So just really quickly, whenever we're working in water projects, the key asset of the muscle wall system is that we can float our walls into place. And then once we have the wall where we want it, we fill the unit with water to sink it. And then we just use one unit at a time. We go one unit at a time and we just work downstream from the upstream side. And so essentially you're just working in, um, depending on the different project uh, criteria or what we're looking to do. Sometimes we're looking to channelize that stream that works very, very well. Um, other times we're just looking to stage the diversion where we're gonna push it to one side and then push it to the other side as they get in there and replace abutments and whatnot. And then in other applications, we actually get in there and dewater the space. And so I'll share that. I apologize, I'm jumping all over here. I do wanna show, oh, and I don't have the video anymore. Okay, my bad, my bad, Bill. Um, I'll have to just follow up with it, but we do have a project with, um, with the Bowman team where essentially we were actually floating the walls into a current flow um, and then filling the walls with water, sinking them, and then pumping out the space, the wet space behind the walls, pushing that water over to the wet side and then drying out that space on the backside of the walls, creating a coffer dam. Um, but I apologize, I, I'm 
I have a picture a picture or two that I can show you guys later on. You'll, the... you'll have a chance to get to the video, I think, by the end, because you're good on timing. When we're at the end and I'm doing some wrap up stuff, you'll be able to find that. And we'll bounce back and forth just a little bit at the end with the contact information and the cleaning okay. green promotion. And then we'll finish with the Q&A. So you, you'll have time to get to that video. It's it's worth it. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Then really, really quickly, um, I just I, I want to highlight this bottom left picture again, just showcasing the mobility of the system. Uh, for this project, the the three pictures on the bottom of this slide, this is a project that's way up there in the mountains, um, really hard accessibility, um, difficult to get out there. And then you guys can actually see the the side, the hillsides. Um, and then in addition to that, they, this bridge had a short um, height, so they couldn't actually get under the bridge with heavy equipment. And so in short, uh, just adding that mobility with our system, they could lower one pallet of walls into the area at a time. Each of those pallets carried 72 linear feet. So they dropped two pallets total for their 150 linear feet. And we had the walls uh, all, all deployed and set up you know, in just a few hours. Each of these projects took less than a work day to completely set up and deploy. This is another project that I have. This is a live project in Colorado Springs, right in the heart of downtown Colorado Springs. Um, but this project just went live a few days ago. And so I swung by uh, a couple of days ago and, and grabbed this picture. Um, but again, just showing how well the system works to divert that flow, push it over. And then the key idea is reusability. You know, the contractors might, uh, you know, push a little bit for the initial cost, but they always, or in my experience, they've always made their money in that first project. And then they're able to reuse that system again and again for decades to come. So uh, this project right here, this is with TZAC Construction. This is at uh, that this is their second project in short. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can find their first project when, when I see it on the slide. Moving forward, just a couple more really cool projects. This is a live project that is also currently going on here in Colorado, uh, right at Lake George. But essentially, they're getting in there and, and they were tasked with deconstructing an old dam. And so to do that, they needed to push the entire South Platte River um, through a diversion through that entire area so that they could deconstruct that dam and remove all of the sediment that had built up. Um, but really fun project. Our wells were in place for over six months, and they successfully pushed that South Platte River for all of the entirety of the project. And they're now in the, in the deconstruction phases and, and getting vegetation set and seeding. I'm going to play one more short video. Um, this just highlights this Lake George project. I know it's not quite as impressive when we're running parallel with the flow of water, but we are moving 150 CFS on an average day on a typical day. So pretty decent flow. And just a really fun project to be on. This was with the National Forest Service. Um, and so I just wanted to point out just really quickly, um, you know, typically they would go in there and they would do an earth in diversion. That's what this company had done in the past. And, and that's, you know, what they were planning on. Uh, the the engineers for this project found out about muscle wall and they loved the idea of doing an above ground diversion that would not disrupt the existing uh, environment any more than they needed to. So originally they were going to have to go in there and, and actually trench out this diversion channel. Um, but as you can see, it's a super rocky terrain area. And so they were moving, I mean, boulders the size of cars. And so not only would it would it have a negative effect on the environment, having all that additional disturbance, but they were looking at three to four weeks of machinery time. And so when they added up the costs, it was a no brainer to shift over to the muscle wall system, uh, be able to get in and out faster, have lower impact on the environment, and then have that reusability. They've got 1200 linear feet of muscle wall that they can use time and time again for future projects. And this group right here has been using these walls already for three years. So this project is, I mean, it's gotta be, they've done at least 10 projects over the last three years. So now they're getting into like the dozens of projects category, um, which is really cool to see. And then let me push forward. This is the video that I wanted to show. It's it's this picture in the top middle and the bottom middle. And I will pull up that video as, as we're transitioning at the end. Um, but it is it is cool. We're able to float the walls into place. And as you can see in this bottom middle picture, initially when we float all the walls in place and when we just get that skirt of, of liner wrapped over the system and in front of our walls, you're still going to have water on the backside until you pump it out. And then in the top middle picture, you can see how that looks as they actually were able to get in there and pump out that space. And this is, again, one of those projects where they were in and out of each of these stages in one workday. They get in there in the morning, get the walls set 
have the entire area dewatered by lunchtime, and then they would get in there and work until you know the sun went down. Really quickly, oftentimes I'll get the question: um, How well does the system do when we're excavating on the backside of the system? Because especially if we're doing dewatering water work projects, usually we're having to work underneath the existing uh, elevation. And so, in short, our system does very well because each of those units is strapped together. Those unit units act as a complete system. Um, so all the walls are tied together and they act as one unit. And so as long as you're only excavating underneath one wall at a time, the other walls will actually hold it up in the air and support it momentarily. And then this is that same project. Let me get a quick sip of water again. Well, and this is one of the videos that we had the audio playing on it. If they can find the original video that's on LinkedIn or in some of our presentations, the audio for this is just like the one coming down from the flood debris post fire. It's just incredible how much force is there and hearing it really, really tells the story. A lot, a lot of, a lot of force up against that wall and it's not moving. Absolutely. And again, I know, you know, these are high risk situations. Anytime we're working in the water, um, you know, if, if you have an issue with that water, it's going to cause massive uh, potentially issues, cost issues. And so in short, this is one of those projects where I got in there and I actually did some of my own engineering homework for the contractor. I figured out what their 100 year flood event should look like. I figured out what their flow rate was looking at, looking like currently when we were going in and actually deploying the system. And in short, I calculated this so that we would have about six inches of freeboard. And that's exactly what we had at the choke point. Um, but Bill and myself can can help assist you guys. Then in addition to that, we also have engineering support groups um, and, and things like that. All right, I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Um, still kind of keeping the idea of using our system for retention, but now moving into the containment space. Our system works very well for stockpile containment and fluid containment, um, both primary and secondary. In the oil and gas space, they call secondary containment uh, just the containment that's around the primary containment being the containment that's holding the fluid or, or whatever they're containing. And so in oil and gas and utilities, you have to have one round of containment and then you have to have a secondary round of containment in case that fails. Our system does very well as an engineered primary and secondary solution. Now, oftentimes people will say it's a secondary solution, uh, but it's not engineered for primary containment. Our system is. It can actually contain that water to the full height of the system. And even in, in a flash flood type event where you're having velocity running perpendicular to our system. And again, I, I keep teasing you guys, but we are going to have a short video on that here in, a, here in just a couple slides. And then similar idea and, and kind of carrying on that idea and parlaying from uh, just stockpile containment and soil containment, fluid containment. Our system also works very well for erosion control along coastlines, um, rivers, lakes, what have you. Um, but using our system to actually retain that beachhead and then secondarily dissipate the energy, you know, from the waves, the currents, what have you, but keeping that beach where it needs to be. And then we have this six inch system. It's a totally unique animal. It's made from recycled plastic. It's designed to be um, uh, vertically loaded. So it's each wall is rated for about uh, over a hundred thousand tons. Sorry, I'm, I'm blanking on it's a hundred tons. Um, and, and I can get you the exact numbers, but in short, they're well over-engineered for, for vertical compression and they're designed to be driven over. They make for excellent curb ramps to protect that curb for an egress area coming in and out of a site. And they also work very well for stockpile containment and then utility crossings and things like that as well. Okay, this is that video that I've been teasing you guys for, but this is uh, some of our original testing. So this is a test that the Utah State uh, sorry, that Musclewall did with the Utah State University. And this is actually how I was introduced to Musclewall. So they they were working with the professors and testing the Musclewall system. And and one of the professors just introduced me to the team. And, and long story short, again, here I am six years later, loving what I do. But in this testing, we had a storage of water being held with the Musclewall system uphill. We cut the strap and let that uh, containment open up so that we're letting all that water flow down the hill and gain momentum. And then we just let it crash into our system perpendicular. And as you can see, the system does very well in the moment that that water impacts our walls. In that moment, it's acting to push on the toe. And so the greater that, that force is, the greater the force is on the toe. And in short, we have many, many applications that are similar to this in the real world where customers have said, you know, we had this sheet flow coming out of our house or we had this mass flash flood and it came out of nowhere. 
our system excels in these areas because the wall are, the walls are pre-filled with water and again they're designed to retain so the instant that water hits the system all that water weight is sitting on the toe you know immediately uh, just really quickly there's no metal components on the back side of these walls there's no pins there's no stakes the walls are just set right on top of the surface they're strapped together and filled with water and then wrapped with a uh, liner to make it impermeable All right, right on guys. Again, I apologize. I had marbles in my mouth and a dry voice, um, but hopefully the information was useful. I'll, I'll transition well, back. Well, it was, and I tell you, you're not out of the woods yet. So I'm gonna take over and just check out the Q&A while you get another drink. Um, one of the things that I did not, I wanna admit to people, I didn't realize you had that video at the end there. I had not seen what that final video was gonna be that was within your PowerPoint. So that was just, that was just good coincidence from teamwork, years of teamwork that I would mention that that was that Utah State uh, testing that reminded me of what you did at CDOT. And you talked about how you get excited about new applications and new opportunities and new challenges. I I've never met anybody like that, uh, more so than Ryan Anderson at Bowman out in Colorado. Uh, he he'll say yes to almost everything because he's creative and brave. And he'll often ask me as an engineer, Ryan's our sales rep at uh, Bowman, one of them. And he'll ask me what I think. And I'm I'm usually hesitant and conservative, but Ryan's not. So on the questions here, uh, Dennis asked, what do you do if you have a current pushing against the wall, not parallel to it? Does it want to tip over? I feel like you answered that, especially with that last video. And what do you recommend for subgrade prep below the wall? Yeah. Yeah. So let me answer that second question, Dennis. So uh, this top left picture uh, illustrates that pretty well. Basically, they just went in there and, and you want a relatively flat space. Um, with that being said, uh, for a project like this, again, we're going in there and we're prepping the space. We're grading it. So it's relatively flat. But on this project right here, at the end of the slope, they do have a 7% down slope. Um, so it can handle you know significant slopes going down. Um, but I apologize. I'm trying to find a better picture of some of these stream projects that were trickier. So maybe this top um, this top section of pictures this project over in manitou um starting kind of on the top left side you can actually see where we were working with sandbags and rocks to help create that relatively level space so each unit when they're filled with water the four foot height each unit's about 1400 pounds so when you fill it with water it's going to sink into the terrain kind of wherever it is and so you do want a relatively flat surface but it by no means has to be perfectly graded or perfectly flat uh, you just want the wall relatively level where it's not going to you know, be prone to tipping. And so right here, you can see, I mean, by no means did we have a, an awesome subgrade. Um, we just used a few sandbags to kind of help prop that wall so it's straight up and down. And then working down the line, we only used a couple sandbags and we deployed these walls right on top of the existing cobblestone uh, for this top left and, and top right picture. We did no prep work um, for this project. And generally for most projects, as long as you don't have... Uh, you know, like riprap or rocks that are, I'd say, larger diameter than like eight inches, it's it's not going to be an issue. Um, if you if you do have some larger rock, that's where we'd want to go in there and either kind of create a, a more level base with some sandbags or some rock aggregate bags, something that we can actually, you know, take out after the project or go in there. And if we can, you know, displace those rocks a little bit and create a little bit more of a level surface. Um, so I'm sorry, that's a long, long winded answer, but the short answer is, is you do want a better subgrade, um, but it would surprise you. I, I would bet it would surprise you, um, the different subgrades that we have deployed the system on. Now, Tyler, you're driving. So one of the things I want to mention, if you can get to one of the ones where we have flood protection, uh, I want to make a, make an example there. You will not have the luxury, especially if it's an emergency or pending emergency, um, if you go to one of the, I think one of the flood where you show it in the city street, you're going to have to sometimes step up over a curb. I think leave it right there. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think back. if you step up over a street right there, uh, that top middle picture, you have to keep two things in mind. One is some of these are going to have to be rapidly deployed, very rapidly deployed and get the, the majority of the wall, um, wall segments installed and connected to each other and strapped together remember that you're going to have a liner of some sort over that whether it's for flood or uh, sediment control or whatever it is you're going to put a liner with it as tyler mentioned you're going to get the opportunity then once you put that liner down to ballast it with sandbags or whatever you have available as you can see in these pictures and i can tell you from personal experience i'd rather throw down 
a few dozen sandbags that are just trying to seal the gaps in some of those transition areas than I would to try to build a levee. I've built two levees in emergency flood situations in my life, and it was a matter of minutes before those were blown out, no matter how well we built them or how tall we built them. Um, so this is an application where there's still going to be a place for things like sandbags, but we're going to be able to help a community and or a property owner uh, make much better use of their time and resources by putting in a system like muscle wall. And then you can strategically and surgically apply sandbags wherever you need to. Yeah, absolutely. How's that, Tyler? Very fair. Yeah, absolutely. And there's different materials that we can use, but but he's dead on. Uh, essentially, we just want that front edge of the liner to be held down for that initial moment when the water is, is moving on the liner. And so sandbags, earthen material, cinder blocks, you know, really any material that they have on, on hand, but definitely just a few sandbags make a world of a difference. And just, uh, just really quickly, this bottom middle picture, this is an emergency deployment. The, the actual building owners deployed 600 linear feet of four foot muscle wall in less than two hours. And they'd never seen our system or deployed it before. This was their first time actually deploying the system and using it. It's pretty much Lincoln Logs. It's male and female connections. Just slide the walls together and, and volunteers or, or skilled labor, anyone in between can help get the system deployed really quickly. And when we do the field demos, we typically have um, one of each of the four foot, three foot, two foot and six inch wall segments with us. In fact, I've had them in my, my personal truck or my company truck. And it's really awesome to watch that aha moment that people have when they go hands on. And Tyler, you did it. Speaking of Army Corps of Engineers, anyone that's dealt with them and some of them may be on here with us. It's not one and done. You don't go to one location for the Army Corps of Engineers and they say, yep, you're approved. Now everyone immediately knows about it and uses it. Once you're approved, you take that, but it's up to us to go tell the story, like with this webinar, like with Clean and Green that's coming up and we'll give you information in a moment. But we still have to go where the people are and the decision makers and let them see it. So Tyler, you went, well, you went, was it last summer? Or was it summer of 2022 to meet with Anthony Heddleston at Army Corps in Rock Island? Yep. Yep. So the last two years, both years we've met with them. Yep. yep. And you were able to take products there and let them see hands-on how that goes together. Exactly. Yep. So yes. So in short, yes, through, through the ASP and quick supply family, um, they, we, we've been able to get in there. We actually demoed for the Omaha branch of the U S army Corps of engineers, and then also the rock Island branch. And then we've had conversations with Anthony Heddleston and then Corey Haberman as well. Um, both of those players are, are key players, uh, on the purchasing side and deployment techniques, uh, for flood control for the entire Midwest. So, um, we're, we're in those conversations, but exactly as Bill said, you know, it's a, it's a big country and, and there's a whole lot of nuances in between each area. And so, um, you know, more than happy if, if you have some stakeholders in your local area that you'd like to demo this for, you know, I, Bill, I'm, I'm kind of jumping in and I apologize, but I'm sure that's. No, that's what I wanted. I wanted to tee it up for you and make sure yeah. you had a drink. Yeah, no, that's perfect. So definitely let us know, you know, we, they've got a, a good amount of inventory right there in the Midwest. And so I'd be happy to jump on a plane or jump in my truck and get over there and support the deployment and any questions, you know, anything like that. Well, that's one of the things I wanted you to offer. And it, it's going to tee up some more Q&A here, which we'll get to. But there's something to be said about almost all of our engineered solutions or any of our products that we carry. If someone could go hands on and touch it and feel it, they can envision it. They can appreciate it more. Uh, the videos are awesome. In fact, you have some of the best pictures and videos in our industry, but it still doesn't beat that hands on experience. And now that we've gotten through um, the pandemic, for the most part, people are getting together. Even through the pandemic, you were able to find some communities that were willing to meet us outside in the parking lot. We did that at Kansas City. Um, we even went to a room there talking about the levees, but you had the outside demo, City of Ankeny. Um, you did a tour of St. Louis. Uh, we went to a number of communities and we're willing to go back to those communities again to get more people to see this. So with that, I'm going to click on the Q&A. Um, yep, there you go. I'm going to scroll down through the ones we've already answered. Uh, how would you protect the wall from freezing and splitting or cracking? I love that. So thank you for the question. Tyler is very good at answering that. Yeah, so excellent question. Thank you. Per our SOP, you actually only, only need to fill each unit three quarters of the way. And then that unit is still going to retain to the full height of the system. But with only filling it three quarters of the way with water, you allow for that room for the water to transition, you know, and, and freeze into ice. Um, worst case scenario, you would not have 
cracking or, or breaking of the wall system. If you overfilled the system with too much water, the port cap on the top side of the wall would pop off like a freeze block on an engine. I like to use the analogy, but it would pop off and then your system is not going to crack as a whole. Um, really quickly on that note as well, though, when we're doing these stream diversion projects here in Colorado, you know, oftentimes we're working through the winter time because that's lower flows. Um, and in short, they they will work through freezing temperatures and, and they want to have that mobility of still being able to, you know, move, move the wall from one area to the other or get off site when they're done. And so what you can do as well is you can add a little bit of RV antifreeze. Um, RV antifreeze typically, and, and you can definitely, you know, look into the different categories, but uh, it's it's food grade. Um, antifreeze, it's it's yeah. completely okay for our waterways or, or for the environment. Um, and I've had projects with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and NASA actually as well, um, where where that was the route that they went. I'm um, just add a couple. Of, a now couple. you're just showing off, dropping NASA in there, man. You're just showing <laughs> off now. Just just showing <laughs> off a little bit, but um, you know those groups where you have to just go through so many strig, stringent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, in short, RV well, fluid would, would work really well to help keep that mobility through the freezing temperatures. And you're friends with a redneck right here in Southern Iowa on a gravel road. And I've, I've learned to do things better than I was taught by my parents and grandparents. So I don't dump used oil on the road. And the antifreeze I use is RV antifreeze in my camper. Um, Cause when I go to flush that out and drain it out, I don't want my dogs who are my security system. You may have just heard go off. I don't want them getting sick from it. And it, and then I feel better about what I'm putting into the water. So RV antifreeze is a good option. Uh, I want to quickly answer a few more of the Q and A's and then we're going to end with um, Madeline will have our contact slide on there, but also a cleaning green promotion right before 130 central. So 1230 mountain, we've got 10 more minutes, Gary. Uh, yes. I'm going to talk about the FEMA testing or the, the army core testing here in just a moment, Chuck, uh, we will send out a link to the presentation. It, we record all of these and it goes on our YouTube channel. Everyone that attends will get not only the Q&A, but they'll have access to that link for the YouTube channel. Anyone that needs a professional development hour for their continuing education can contact me or Madeline Kreitler, and you'll have our contact information from the correspondents after this uh, webinar. Just fill out the questionnaire and send that back to us. Everyone has access to that and it's free. And Gary, yeah, you have a couple applications to discuss. Same thing. You'll see the contact info. Tyler is tyler at musclewall.com. Mine's bmurphy at aspent.com. You'll have that and you'll have Madeline's. You contact any of us. And depending on where you're at, we could even put you in, in touch with one of our local sales reps from Bowman, Cascade, Quick, or ASP. So thank you for that. And Donald, a uh, quick way to fill the walls, buddy. Nothing beats just the water on site. And most of the applications we deal with have water nearby and that's part of why the muscle wall is being used and the special connections the ratchet straps come with the units that tie the units uh, side to side on the connecting units end to end and they also come with the metal clips that tyler referenced that put the uh, fabric or the liner over top of the wall those are included and mm -hmm. chuck yep you're welcome buddy and tyler let's have you help answer gary's question you do have a video where they're ramming and he's what he's asking about is that flood uh, testing video where they ram the the pole into the wall once it's flooded. Yeah. So Gary, I'll share, um, well, well, Gary, uh, Bill and I will share um, our, our U.S. Army Corps of Engineers testing. And then also on the note of FEMA, so FEMA doesn't necessarily approve products, um, but they show approval through funding. And FEMA has funded right. and reimbursed many muscle wall projects, uh, namely Passaic Valley Sewage and Orange and Rockland Utilities. Well, all of the muscle wall that both of those groups own um, were, were refunded and purchased through FEMA. Um, really quickly, on the, on the note of, of the hydrodynamic testing, absolutely. In that Army Corps uh, report and then also in the video, they did wave testing, they did um, uh, debris impact testing, and then they also did current testing in their testing process. Um, and, and with those waves, I mean, they had two and three foot waves that were crashing against our four foot system perpendicularly. Um, and our system, in short, does does very well. How many other systems have passed that four foot wall test, Tyler? So no other system has uh, passed at the four foot height. Yeah, exactly. And that matters because the insurance industry is paying attention to this, folks. Uh, there are incentives, especially in the coastal communities or any communities that are prone to flooding. And I can't tell you that yours is going to do this, but there are communities that are getting incentivized to prevent flooding ahead of time, whether that be better rates 
or maybe even grant programs to help pay for some of these systems that can be rapidly deployed. Everyone says that they don't need it yet. And guess what happens um, with some of the other products that have been around for a decade or two. I know this from personal experience. Uh, I do a lot of natural disaster uh, relief in my personal time, uh, a lot of mission work. And I've been to a lot of communities that said, wow, we called, we called our DOT or our, whoever they dealt with and we couldn't get the flood protection. I said, when did you call? Oh, at least 24 hours, 48 hours before the flood. Well, guess what happened? Everybody else called at the same time. And there's only so many resources available. So one of the things that we have to tell the story on is planning ahead. We can't do your risk management for you. We could crunch some numbers on how tall a wall or what type of a channel cross section you might need to carry that 100 year storm through a stream during construction. But we can't do your flood risk analysis. That's going to have to be something that you got to take seriously. And someone who's a stakeholder that has access to the checkbook has to decide what's the uh, what's the uh, ounce of prevention, pound of cure. Um, I've seen billions and trillions of dollars in our country spent in communities that people then said, "We, oh, if only we would have known, if only we would have, if only, if only. We're not saying this is going to solve all the world's problems. We're not saying this is guaranteed to stop every natural disaster. But there's a lot of peace of mind that comes with good engineering design and planning before disaster strikes. So right now we're spending a lot of time on the flood protection part. I think it's because of the way the question was asked. But these communities that are being forward thinking, I love it. And it's usually ones that have been hurt, jaded, burned, uh, damaged uh, tremendously in the past. And they're trying to do better now. And the post-fire work that Tyler has shown in Colorado and California that blows my mind is the amount of debris. You want to talk about debris hitting it. The Army Corps test at Vicksburg, Mississippi looks pretty stringent, but it's nothing compared to Mother Nature. Right, Tyler? You've seen some pretty massive uh, flood debris coming down off some of those mountains. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And in California, I mean, we we have quite a bit of experience working with actual mud flows and debris flows where it's literally just mud and trees and rocks moving. And. Uh, Tyler, we got asked if you do own the four foot wall. This is an excellent question. And you're welcome, Gary. Uh, we got asked if you own the four foot wall, what does it take to turn that into a six foot wall? Is that possible? So really good eye, Gary. Um, it, it, this is our six foot system in the back of this bottom right picture. Uh, the six foot system is the only system that's stackable. And all it is, is it's our four foot system with a two foot unit on top of the four foot system. And then once we get to the six foot height and the eight foot height, we do have exoskeleton angle bracing that goes off the back side of the system. And then there's a strap system for connecting the extensions onto the four foot wall and connecting all of that to the bracing so that it's supported. Um, and, and I apologize, I, I don't think I mentioned that, but at the six foot and the eight foot height, you do have bracing. It's just amazing um, some of the forces that we're dealing with when we have moving flows at eight feet in, in height. I've seen homes carried away from their communities and, and, and other structures. So it is amazing the amount of force we're talking about. Uh, we're getting close to the end. So I'm going to ask my friend, Madeline and Tyler, awesome job as always. You're not done yet, but awesome job. I'll let you do a closing. Madeline, would you be willing to please pull up the slide that has our um, clean and green notice on it? Thank you for hanging in there with us, Madeline. You're, you're a rock star. This is it, folks. I'm super excited. Tyler got to experience it this year in 2023. In fact, he was, uh, I think, the only person, well, one of the only people that went to all six locations. I think we might have had a couple others. But we've changed the locations for this year um, on four of the six locations. We're going to start out clean and green. And, folks, if you don't know about clean and green, hang on and buckle up and be ready for one of the greatest events in our industry for the entire year. And I say that in part because I'm part of the team that gets to run it, but also because it is just awesome. And we hear a lot of, a lot of good feedback from our manufacturers, our, our vendors, our exhibitors, and our presenters that it's one of the most um, powerful bang for their buck opportunities for the whole year. So Salt Lake City, we're starting it out. And it's our first time in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we're starting in February 6th. So register now. If you'll see in the bottom right corner of this, if you register by January 1, you're eligible for a $100 gift card. And if you use the QR code on the screen, you can register for one or any of the six locations or all of them. And we're going to hit Denver again. We were in Denver. We're going to hit Denver because we got a lot more people that want to join us this year, February 8th. Then we're going to move it to the Midwest, Columbia, Missouri on the 21st of February and Wichita, Kansas on the 23rd of February. A day in between on both of those weeks just to give you some travel time. 
And then we're going to wrap it up in the Midwest also with the ASP location in Omaha, March 26th, and our quick supply location, Iowa City, Coralville on March 28th. So there's more information available at the cleanandgreenexpo.com or contact Madeline or myself and get on LinkedIn. And Tyler, uh, you were huge for us at Clean and Green this year. So what, what kind of encouraging words would you say about Clean and Green from your experience? So it's going to sound like I'm blowing smoke, but I promise I'm not. Um, <laughs> you know, I've been to a lot of conferences. I go to do dozens of conferences. Um, on a yearly basis and have for six years. So it's all relative, right? I'm new to the space, but of all the conferences I've been to, this is the most worthwhile. Um, it's amazing the, the amount of quality time. It's really high quality time. You're going to have presentations from new and innovative speakers and, and products, things like that. But then there's really good quality time in between the presentations to get to know, you know, your community, your, your fellow engineers, the stakeholders, you know, all the contractors, everyone in between. And it's amazing. You guys had a complete show out, uh, like full house at all of your locations last year. Um, yeah. So I, I really, I highly recommend. It's a great time. That's awesome. Thank you, Tyler. And we didn't plan that. We didn't schedule that or rehearse it or anything. So that's awesome. Thank you. And Madeline, thanks again, as always. And I will mention, we won't have it on the screen because I didn't confirm his commitment to the date. But Wednesday, January 10th, we're going to do this technical talks webinar again, but in a different way. It won't be one of our manufacturer representatives. It's going to be someone in our industry who's very interesting. And I'll just give a teaser he gave me a calendar recently, but I just sent him the information, I think final information last night and, or yesterday, I didn't get a chance to confirm with him, but stay tuned for LinkedIn and stay tuned for another email from Madeline and look for our newsletter. If you're not getting the newsletter, let Madeline or myself know. Uh, if you're one of those that registered for this via LinkedIn, make sure that we get you on our mailing list. So thank you, Tyler. Any parting thank words? I really appreciate everyone. Thank you everyone for, for making the time to join. Thank you. Thank you, Madeline. I appreciate you. Take care, everybody.